farmhouse in the Canadian countryside is full of warmth and conversation. The local grandmothers are gathering by the dozen. The women swap news about the town and their families. Friendship and a long life of experience bring them together. You know, we think of motherhood as being the, the closest thing, but I think grandmotherhood <laughs> is very important, you know, and any, any woman who has a first grandchild feels as though they've arrived, really. But this is so much more than a gathering of grannies. It's a special night. The women are welcoming two important guests from South Africa. But you're all mothers to me. Everybody's my mother. Yeah. Yeah. Nice Nice to have a lot of mummies. Yeah. We are warm in Canada. All the grannies are so active and this one is doing that, that one is doing that. Their vibe is just amazing and I wonder where they get the energy. And few here have more energy than 89-year-old Australian turned Canadian Norma Gecki. Her friends know that when Norma gets an idea, it's hard to say no. It's a little embarrassing to think that that's the case, but <laughs> I've been told that myself, yes. Norma Gecki turned a chance encounter into a revolution. Now thousands of Canadian grandmothers are forging remarkable bonds with their counterparts in South Africa, where AIDS all but wiped out a generation. Oh, four special women. We can't really understand the pain that they must, they must suffer because it's... There's nothing comparable, is there, here? And, of course, it's, you know, it's the story of the AIDS epidemic and, and of course, the, the fact that they've lost a whole generation. OK. This is all Diana's show from now on. Oh, my God. I'm so full, I cannot even talk. <laughs> Many families affected by AIDS live here in Alexandra, one of the poorest and most crowded townships in South Africa. Hundreds of thousands of people are crammed into seven square kilometres. But look carefully into the crowds and you can see that something is missing. AIDS has taken the lives of thousands of adults, leaving the young and the old behind. Seventeen-year-old Bobo Mazabuko is one of the survivors. His parents and brother died of AIDS. Bobo is HIV positive too, but he's hopeful of the future. He owes his life to his grandmother, Lucia Mazabuko, who has fought so hard for her family. She tell me everything is going to be all right. I must keep going, keep pushing hard. But no matter how hard things are, just keep praying. These photos are the remembrance of my kids, those who passed away. While many grandmothers have photos to brag about their children, Lucia has photos to mourn those she has lost. They are with me. I know that. This is the personal toll of AIDS on her family. Her daughter, Noctula, died of AIDS in 1999. Her other daughter, Puleng, in 2000. In 2004, the disease took the life of her grandson, Bongani. He had just turned 10. This is Bongani, my lovely Bongani. He was sick here. The losses were so devastating, she blamed herself. I just think that I'm a bad mother. Maybe I didn't teach my kids well. Why me? That was the question. And I didn't know that my grandchildren were HIV positive. Lucia's grandsons were born HIV positive. They contracted the virus from their mother. The illness went from one generation to the next because of a lack of testing and prevention. Lucia nursed and cared for both her daughters and grandson as they died. Bongani's funeral almost destroyed her. So what I remember is when I saw the coffin going down, uh, I, I don't even remember well that part makes me shoo. I, I don't want to remember that part. That was the part that breaks my heart.
It was a devastating loss repeated across South Africa. Young parents died, leaving their HIV-positive children behind. Some families disappeared altogether, buried side by side. But there was something that made it even worse. Despite the thousands of deaths, the South African government refused to distribute life-saving AIDS medication. Everyone in our society is fed up with the government's AIDS policy. The battle was intensifying when I arrived in South Africa as a young foreign correspondent. President Thabo Mbeki is now running out of time and space to delay treatment any further. AIDS patients took to the streets in their thousands, demanding the medication. But the government refused to give in. Much of the reason why was this man. All I would say to that really is that people must, do, must look at what we're doing in South Africa. Not their perception of what they think we're doing, but what we're doing actually. President Thabo Mbeki was an AIDS denialist. He didn't believe the established science behind HIV. And he refused to distribute AIDS medication even though donors were offering to provide it. It was a devastating decision. It's estimated that up to 330,000 South Africans died needlessly because they couldn't get treatment. The government's lack of action placed a huge burden on the grandmothers of South Africa. They not only lost their adult children, but they were left to nurse their dying grandchildren. The grandmothers stepped in as the government was walking away. It's so hard, hard to understand, hard to take it, hard to think about it. It's so difficult and it's painful. Eventually, the government's hand was forced when the Supreme Court ordered it to distribute the AIDS medication. But for Lucia Mazabuko's eldest grandson, it was too late. He died just as the drugs were being rolled out. But his younger brother Bobo, just eight years old at the time and also HIV positive, was luckier. It was cruel timing. Lucia lost one grandson while the other lived. And I just say, God, maybe it was your will. It was the task that you were giving me. So I'm looking after Bobo now and he's doing well. Do you feel angry about what happened? I don't want to feel angry because I'm a Christian, I pray. So things that passed, is, I put them at the back and just look forward to what is going to happen, not the past. You know, some of the kids sometimes approaches me and they need clarity. Now, the drugs that AIDS activists fought so hard for are widely available. South Africa has the largest antiretroviral medication program in the world. Nurse Rose Latwaba has been working with AIDS orphans and their families for more than a decade. I think that as a country, we have done extremely well in terms of controlling, um, you know, the HIV virus in terms of making kids live longer. But we don't seem to have... Um, the structures that are there to support them. She worries about what will happen to these children when they leave the orphanage. They're not lucky enough to have grandparents to look after them. The family support makes a huge difference in a country with hardly any government social services. It has been a blessing. They did not have to move away from their familiar environment to come to places like ours. Rose Latwaba is crucial to the story of how the South African and Canadian grandmothers got together. She visited Canada in 2004 and happened to give a talk at the local church in Wakefield. here on behalf of the Alex AIDS Orphans Project. She spoke about the plight of South African grandmothers 
known as Go-Go's in Zulu. In the audience that night was Norma Geki. So I went over and introduced myself to them and said to Rose, what if, uh, what if a group of, of Wakefield women were to partner with, with some of these Go-Go's? The grandmothers in Wakefield decided to write letters and pair up with their counterparts in Alexandra to offer support. The idea was to create a partnership with the South African grandmothers rather than just a charity. I say it's almost like spontaneous combustion. Suddenly, 10 women appeared and uh, we weren't too sure where we would go from here, but we, uh, uh, we decided we'd have a fundraiser and then maybe send, send some money to them. You cannot um, not appreciate the involvement of community-based organisations that have stepped in and helped these grannies. Now, Norma Geki is welcoming Rose Latwaba's younger sister, Diana, to Wakefield. Diana and her colleague, Pindile, both work with AIDS orphans and grandmothers in South Africa. When we go to Carroll's, we'll, we'll drive right across, right around the river. The Wakefield grannies and the community donated frequent flyer points to make the journey possible. Oh, it's a cool bridge, it's like a house. We've got a marvellous community. We always feel as though we give them value for money, though. You know, if we... this is where we have a, an annual concert. And we call it the, the Great Granny Concert. So the partnering thing has been the secret, of course, I think. It's uh, because I think each of, each of those women just felt rather special that they had, uh, having come from a stage of being very stigmatised, they felt that perhaps there were, they were somebody, that, that women the other side of the world actually were, uh, uh, were their friends. What are you making? Norma? Well, I'm making Jane's ridiculously simple banana bread. Is it ridiculously it, simple? It is absolutely <laughs> ridiculously simple. It's sort of a, um, a you know, non-fail recipe. So Norma Geki is almost 90. She's full of energy and enthusiasm. Do you miss Australia much, Norma? Uh, well. I guess I've been away for so long, I love it every time I go back. She arrived in Wakefield 60 years ago as an adventurous young Australian nurse. Did you ever think that you'd be spending the rest of your life here? Not at all, no, no. That wasn't in the plan at any stage, actually, uh, until I met my husband. <laughs> Norma fell in love and married the local doctor. They had three children and she started pouring her energy into the community. Oh, it's my life actually. <laughs> it, um, yes, I guess I've always volunteered. It becomes a way of life after a while. It's a wonderful example of thinking globally but acting locally. What began here in the small town of Wakefield has been nicknamed the Great Granny Revolution. There are now around 250 grandmother groups right across Canada. Together they've raised millions of dollars and established thousands of connections with grandmothers in Africa. In 2006, the Wakefield grannies received a visit from one of Canada's most famous humanitarians. Stephen Lewis was the United Nations Special Envoy for AIDS in Africa. People, this is, of course, Stephen Lewis. The young kids here are kids who have been fundraising for us. He heard about the work of the Wakefield grannies and offered some help. Said we should be doing something special for the grandmother. <laughs> The Stephen Lewis Foundation brought hundreds of Canadian and African grandmothers together for a historic gathering. They took to the streets of Toronto to raise awareness about AIDS. There's eight to 10,000 of them at least, and uh, oh, they're indomitable. They're just, uh, they're irrepressible. They're everywhere, and they're, 
they're extraordinary. I mean, when we when we launched the whole Grandmothers to Grandmothers campaign, uh, it was an idea. I had the belief that, and, and all of us at the foundation believed that if women of grandmothering age understood what was happening in Africa, they would immediately not just empathize, but have a a deep a deeper understanding of of what it meant because they could. In a, in a horrific way, imagine the loss of their adult children and what it would mean to get up the next morning and be looking after all of your grandchildren. The moral support from the Canadians played a huge role in breaking down the stigma around AIDS. People always say, Hi, Mom Lucia, how are you feeling? Nobody says shame to me. That's what keeps me strong. You know, it's most beautiful to me to see the snows and the mountains. In 2008, <laughs> several Wakefield grannies, including Norma Geki, travelled to Alexandra. <laughs> they received a warm welcome. But they also saw the poverty of the township up close for the first time. Oh, the poverty is terrible, such a slum area. And we would hear from, from you know, they would tell us that uh, they, very often there'd be people sleeping on the floor, but there would also be rats. So it's, uh, it's just uh, something we, we can't understand. Wow. The culture shock hits both ways. Diana and Pendile have never been overseas before. And the thing that strikes the most about Canada is not the weather, scenery or the wealth. It's that women can live so freely without a constant fear of rape. It's very, very interesting because um, as women in, in South Africa, we worry much about that because it happened a lot, sexual assault, rape. It happened a lot in our communities. And here it's just a very different vibe. Since I came here, I never heard a story about um, an, a lady, an old lady being attacked in the house. No. So it's something that is quite very, very different from us. It's reality for the grandmothers of Alexandra. They meet here every Tuesday at a clinic to tell their stories and support each other. I always told them my story and just told them everything that I've been through. So they started being open and said, hey, at my place is like this. Even if they've got problems with the kids, I've got kids. Just when these women thought their mothering days were almost over, they have the responsibility of raising another generation, their grandchildren. Together, the grandmothers of South Africa are caring for tens of thousands of AIDS orphans. Um, you know, it's quite very hard for the grandmothers because you could imagine at the age where you need somebody to look after you and you have to look after children, especially as young as some under a year, and then you, you have to look after a 16-year-old who's going through different stages in her life. So it's quite very, very hard for them. Most of the grandmothers don't have a reliable income. Many are struggling with their own health problems. It can be physically and emotionally exhausting. Research has shown that AIDS orphans often have high levels of anxiety and depression and are more likely to take risks with sex and illegal drugs. Every 
day. Is she the game in the day? Yaza, Yam Kumbul, Yalal, Yam Kumbul. Yas booze out here in the wrong Namon and I, and as I give as a police. It's a huge load for the Alexandra grandmothers to bear. That's why the support from Canada is so important. They receive letters, cards and much-needed financial aid. When you get a letter from Canada, you are just like a big boss. Yeah, you have got a letter from overseas and you just call your kids and say, hey, I've got a letter, you read it. I, I have no way to describe it, but um, it is through them that we are here day by day. And it's through them that the children in Alex that are often by AIDS are able to go to school every single day and make sure that they have a meal when they come back home. Diana Teppo, who comes from Johannesburg, will talk to us. The Wakefield grannies are teaching their own community about the importance of caring for others. It's a traditional concept they learned in South Africa, known as Ubuntu. I am because you are, and we are all connected. And when we are connected, we are whole and we are strong. You can count on me, and I can count on you. It's a hands-on introduction for the children of Wakefield, who are growing up in one of the wealthiest and safest countries in the world. Now, thanks to their grandmothers, they have a real-life connection with South Africa. Yes, it takes time to plate it. Grandmothers in Canada have given a real meaning to global citizenship. And for older women to be taking that initiative and showing everyone else that it's not just possible, but it's an absolute necessity, that's an important political point. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, The latest batch of letters and small gifts has arrived from the grandmothers in Alexandra. Cordula Padel has received a card from her Alexandra pen friend, Lucia Mazabuko. They've been writing to each other for 10 years. Life remains but an amazing journey and certainly not a destination. Dear Lucia, it is an exciting time tomorrow. Diana and Pindile are coming. It has indeed been a great honor and a sweet privilege to have been blessed with you as a friend. The sort of, sorry. <laughs> All my best wishes for the coming season. I wish lots of love. The thought of you, how much love you have shown to me is just amazing and truly fulfilling to one's life. Thinking of you often, Kodula. What do these words mean to you when you read them? What do you think? They touch me deeply, yeah. And I'm very thankful for that. I feel happy, and Kodula is a friend. She's so quiet, she's like shy, but she's good. Really, she's a good, pe she's, she's a good person, yes. I've got one for Ruth. Ruth oh. The connection brings joy and support to the grandmothers in Canada and South Africa. It's shown that older women have a lot to offer their communities. It's become a social movement in Canada. The grandmothers are serious and they have a lot to say. I look at Norma and I said, where do you get your energy? Because you just go. When we go, she just go. So you, you ask yourself, the energy is amazing. And the love this the women have here is just overwhelming. It's just really, really overwhelming. Oh, nothing's too difficult. <laughs> Not at all. And I, I, I think they're great rewards, really. I think that, you know, if you throw yourself into something like this, I think it's enriching. Wow. <laughs>
Are you somebody now? I think I am. I'm not rich. I'm still poor. I'm still Lucia. I'm still the same Lucia, but uh, I've changed. I've changed. In here, I've changed. Oh, my God.